guys, Sean and I are here with a super fun video. We're gonna give you guys a peek into what we carry in our work bags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of course, you know, depending on the situation, the things that are in our bags may or may not be what you see here today, but just for the sake of giving you an idea, we're gonna show you what we have. So I have my work bag here. As you guys can see, it's pretty stuffed. Babe can't even really probably hold his up for you guys because it's huge and also stuffed. So we're just gonna jump right into it. First thing I have in here is some honey graham crackers because sometimes, you know, as a nurse, like you may be busy or maybe your, your lunch is like running late and things like that. So it's nice to have like some graham crackers or a light little snack, you know, just so you're not running on empty. The next thing I have in my bag, now keep in mind you guys, um, so I am a registered nurse, but a lot of my more official things that I would use like on a day to day basis comes completely stocked in the hospital. So things like medical tape and bandages and stuff like that are all available to us on our unit. So I wouldn't necessarily need that in my bag. This is more so like my personal stuff that I take to work. So I have my North Face jacket because it can get really cold, you guys. And even though I'm not typically like allowed to wear it, you know, on the floor when I go on my break or sometimes I'll slip into the break room and like warm up for a little bit because like I said, it can be really cold. Um, another thing that I have for when I slip into the break room is this book. Now, depending on like whether I'm done reading or not, my books will change. Um, I'm currently on The Secrets of a Shoe Addict. But yeah, so I'm, I read pretty fast, so I probably won't have this one in here for like too, too long. So this is my coveted front pocket. It's the thing that I reach for the first, like first. So I like to put everything that I need right away in here. So basically I have like a million pins, some dry erase markers because as you nurses out there know, and for those of you who don't, we have to update our boards and we update our boards with like all of our information what our names are, what the doctor's names are, anything the patient may need to know, stuff like that, so. It reminds me of like those metallic pen collections that people used to run around. Oh yeah, the gel pens, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is just my pen collection, and it's a lot of different random pens, and you guys know like, when people come and they do demonstrations and things like that, they'll like give out pens, and I just add it to my front pocket, <laughs> you know. So I have all of that in my front pocket. I will show you guys, let me cover this part, but this is the part of my badge that hangs down and it's just like, it tells my status, so RN right there. I have a pack of just like cheap pins. I can't remember where I got these from, maybe Walmart, but I just have a pack of these little cheap ones for when people are like, do you have a pin? <laughs> <laughs> so I give them one of these because I never get it back, that's right. I also have a lot of highlighters, so if I'm taking care of a patient and like, there's something important that I need to, you know, keep mind of or anything that like I want to make myself remember, I will just draw a little highlight through that on my report sheet. In this next pocket, I have just like a few pieces of candy and then, yeah, I have some Victoria's Secret lip gloss in here. So sometimes, you know, like if my lips are feeling like they need a little moisture, I'll put like some of this on. But you know, it's nothing special. It's just something to add a little shine. All right, so the next thing that I have are these cards and they say like integrity, compassion, and things like that. I'm actually like, we turn these in to get a gift, but I just, I don't know, I keep them because like you get one of these when a patient has something really nice to say about you. So like, it's like, you are exceptional. And then they have my name right here. So it's just somebody like, you know, said something good about you. Like this one says that they did a phone survey on a patient and they had like really nice comments on the phone. So oh, that's nice. you collect these and you can get gifts, but I just keep them because they make me feel good. And that is the greatest gift. Yeah. Um, again, a nurse can never have too many of these babies. So I have even more inside of my bag because they, they honestly go missing all day. Like, <laughs> put it on your WOW and it'll go missing. I guarantee it. What's a WOW? WOW is a workstation on wheels. So basically it's a computer. Oh. Okay. All right, I also have like a little bottle of sanitizer, which I actually need to refill because it's really low. But I like to keep this in my bag, just like, you know, I'm really like anal about keeping my hands clean and, and he will tell you, I'm like, baby, sanitizer, sanitizer, sanitizer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah that's what happens when you marry a nurse next thing i have in here 
are these two bottles of CeraVe Healing Ointment. Now, oh my God, let me tell you guys. I can vouch for this product and this is not like an ad or anything. I honestly use these. And it's because we wash our hands so much in the hospital and like literally in the winter time, my skin is so sensitive that just washing it after a couple times, it would start to like crack and be painful. So whenever I wash my hands, I put a little bit of this on. It's also something that it's nice. I can use it because it's not going to like irritate any of the patients. It doesn't have like any scents or anything in there. But it says that like um, it's accepted by the eczema association. So I guess that means that they feel like it's good for that too. Huh. So yeah, I just use this. Uh, my mom recommended this for me or was it my sister? I forget who recommended this to me. But anyways, it's really good for like if you're having that same issue and your hands get so cracked. Like my hands would get so cracked, I would cry. I had to figure something out. Um, so the next thing that I have is just like this cheap pack of hair ties. And that's because you never know when you might have to throw up a ponytail and hit that like hit those compressions. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it gets crazy and you got to pull out the hair ties. So... That's why I have a pack of hair ties in there. I have headphones. So just because, you know, sometimes on break I might listen to music or, you know, you just never know. You might need these. Also, sometimes if you're doing like those continuing education courses that you can do at the hospital, um, it's nice to have these so that nobody, like the whole station can't hear what you're working on. Next thing I have is my little, like, I call it my pocket buddy. So this is what goes in my front pocket generally. I have a couple pairs of scissors, a calculator if I need to do like a quick dosage calculation. And then I also have my pen light. So my pen light, I use it when I'm like checking neuro. So I check my patient's eyes, make sure everything's okay. Beautiful baby. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, that's why I have this pen light in here. An extra little like badge clip. And my sister made this actually, Simply Shalice. She makes all kinds of cute stuff and she made this from medicine caps and just like a little regular badge clip. <laughs> so these are like old medications that were given to patients that would otherwise be tossed out. Oh. And she made it into a little flower. How cute is that? Shalice. I'll link the video for you guys so you can see like how she made this. I have these little hide like identa hides in here and these probably just ended up in here because whenever we're giving patients a like, IV infusions whenever we're going to toss out the bag it has all their information on there so you peel one of these and put it across their information and then you could toss it in the trash. Oh okay. So you're never supposed to like toss you know any kind of personal or private stuff. information in mm -hmm. the garbage so you can put one of these labels on there and then it should be okay. Cool. A medicine crusher in here. A pill crusher. So you just undo it. It's like that. It's just very basic. You put the pills in there. This is the top part. You twist it, you twist, 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 and it crushes up the pill. Why? For patients who have like trouble swallowing or things like that, or if I'm supposed to put it through like a peg tube or oh, okay, anything gotcha. like that. Which, for those of you that don't know, those different types of tubes, like NG tube, peg tube, are used for patients who have to have assistance with eating. So they have a tube that's either going, you know, into their stomach or down their nose. And medicine, we push the medicine through there. In this other pocket, I have some blotting sheets because after 12 hours, a girl might get a little oily, you know? So, I'm gonna have some blotting sheets for that. The next thing that I have down in here is some basil. So, basil natural oil. Now, an older nurse gave me this little tip. Um, whenever I'm doing like wound care, because you know, the nurses have to, well, unless you have a specific wound care nurse, the RNs do it. And so pretty much it could be anything. Like usually it's like big gaping wounds and holes and stuff like that. So sometimes there's a little smell to it, right? Because uh, the skin is decayed. So whenever I'm going to do like some intense wound care, I'll just put a couple of drops of this on the inside of my mask. Mm. And it helps me like, because I'm one of those people like, I sometimes I just randomly get nauseous. That helps me not to get like lightheaded and nauseous while I'm in the middle of doing wound care. So putting a little bit of that in there helps me a lot. Cool. Yeah. And I also notice that it's kind of like relaxing because whenever I smell that, it like takes me to the spa. So even <laughs> though I'm like, you know, wrapping and pouring and I'm in my mind, I'm like at the spa. <laughs> hmm. Um, I have another pair of scissors in here and these are generally the scissors that we use to like, uh, you know, you can pretty much cut whatever with them. We like the bigger ones generally for bandages, but it's just nice to have a pack of these because you know, I mean, a few of these because you never know when you might need them. So going into my middle section, I have 
some water because sometimes you know a girl gets a little dehydrated when you're running 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 so I have some water in there I have a few um, report sheets now these are not like I'm not gonna show these because these are not my actual report sheets that I prefer these are just like a bunch of random ones for in case I don't have you know my report sheet so I still have something to write on what I don't have in my bag which is generally kept in my locker is my stethoscope and I have one of those cute little clipboards you guys know the ones that fold into two and they have like the measurements on them and things like that but I do have one of those in like a pretty lavender color mm. all right this bag can save you okay so there was an incident once when I was working with a trick and you know with trach secretions so secretion like got away and it flew you know right hit me right about here so you know of course you have to like there are things you have to do and this bag allows me to get back right okay so <laughs> i have you know a bar of soap in here i have some more makeup i have eyeliner mascara you know nothing like too fancy just like a little cheap stuff just in case it like happens first thing in the morning and i still want to like look cute um then i have a little travel toothbrush and some floss and i have some a travel size toothpaste in here i have some peppermint chews you know just in case like they serve something crazy and it leaves you like with a, you know, a taste in your mouth. I also have deodorant because you can get really sweaty at work. So like you're running, mm. running, running, you know, you're taking care of patients and oh my God, don't let there be a code. Like you're doing compressions, you're pushing meds. So you're not able to get a shower right away, obviously because you're at work, but sometimes it helps if you like, you know, just feel like you're freshening up a little bit, you know, mm. it helps. I have that. I have this big bottle of Aleve because nobody likes getting a headache at work. And also I like to have Aleve just in case like, you know, I'm caught off guard, you know, ladies caught off guard at work. So I do have this and I do have some fem feminine products in this bag as well, just in case. Um, I have a couple of cheap chargers and when I say cheap chargers, they are literally so cheap. Like, so basically if I forgot them at work, I wouldn't care or if somebody like borrow them and didn't give it back to me i wouldn't care so mm -hmm. that's what i have right there um i have a bottle of nail polish in here because you know we're supposed to have like our nails to a certain standard generally um i like to follow it because i don't want like tips on and to have anything nasty getting under my nails and then bring it home and i'm eating and taking care of my dog and feeding my husband you know with stuff from the hospital so yeah. a lot of people do keep wearing the, <laughs> the artificial nails but i don't do that uh just to be safe because I'm a little paranoid about that. But I do have this bottle of nail polish in case like for whatever reason one of mine chips or something at work just so that I stay within standard. So mm. I don't want it to be like, oh my gosh, she's wearing like chip nail polish to work, you know. I have my planner in here that Babe picked out for me. He actually saw this one in the store and he brought it to my attention. I love it. It's so cute. Um, so this planner is what I keep like important things that I need to do in and you know, deadlines and dates and stuff like that i also plan out some of the vlogs for you guys in here so the planner and then the last thing that i have in my bag now like i said remember guys you haven't seen a lot of like official professional stuff in my bag because things like that i need to really take care of my patient are on the unit already and they don't like for us to bring that stuff off of the unit so like needles ivs bandages you know all that different kind of stuff that you see in Grey's Anatomy and whatnot. Yeah, we keep that on the floor in the hospital. And then my stethoscope and my clipboard are kept in the locker so that, that they're easy to get to. Hmm. Um, but my probably one of the most important things I feel like I have in here is this random CD. I don't even know where I found it, but literally it's like a random, it says Soothing Sanctuary. And so I'll pop this in and play it if I have an especially difficult day, like if I lost a patient or you know somebody's just really going through it and I like feel for them so I, I'm a very emotional person and I do have to like you know train myself to leave it leave it there um, but this helps to kind of like you know soothe myself and um, to kind of you know not think about this maybe all the sad that's going on because sometimes I can see some really sad stuff so it wears on you after a while um, but yeah, so baby, that's pretty much 
the gist of what's in my bag. Very nice. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what's in your bag because I feel like it's not going to be quite as girly as the stuff that was in mine. <laughs> <laughs> Half of my stuff, if not all my stuff, is uh, issued to me. I did not choose it. Okay. So. <laughs> all right. Well, first thing is first, I will start off with my helmet. This is my helmet. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> um, it has. <laughs> It's got a uh, rhino mount on the front, which is for uh, mounting your night vision goggles. Uh, chin strap, of course. Uh, we've got, our unit has this add extra camouflage to it to mm. break up the outline of a helmet. Nice. There's my helmet. Mm. Ballistic Eye Pro. Uh, very important, uh, especially if you're working a saw, which is an M249 automatic machine gun, which fires from the open belt position. Fires 5.56, five, belt fed or magazine fed and uh, typically you'd like something like that because if anything blows back in your face you don't want like shrapnel in your eyes oh, yeah. so very useful yeah so whenever we're doing like kind of chill I will I'll just say chill field ops especially in summer <laughs> uh, I've got this this is called a taps um, there the ACU version of it is called a flick current this is currently set to field setup that I I'd most commonly use so like on my right side this is my sustainment pouch i.e. a canteen pouch which I'll usually use with like um, I usually have my night vision goggles tied down in, in here whenever I'm not using them but for all other occasions some field wipes very important hygiene is actually very important got my uh, headlamp there it's also very almost dead. I'm glad I saw that. <laughs> Got to rechange the battery. Change yeah. the battery. Next most, actually, one of the most important things on this kit is my Gerber. This is my Leatherman Mutt. That looks menacing. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's very useful. Um, I use it for working on my weapon or if I have to cut anything. Fold this back up. It's got a knife. It's got a saw. There was a couple more tools that were on this, but uh, they've since fallen off. I'm gonna have to actually replace this one. Uh, this is a carbon scraper right here. Just uh, whenever you're cleaning your weapon, like carbon does get gunked up on your weapon, mm -hmm. so you have to scrape it off. Is a um, it's like a belt cutter. So I guess if you had to get yourself out of like a Humvee, you can just cut it. That's why I keep it on my kit uh, at all times. It can save your life. All of these items on my uh, taps are actually very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically, so like if we're doing blank ammo, which is which means it doesn't have a projectile, uh, we'll use the taps because it's just lighter. It keeps you from being well, overburdened and keeps you from overheating too. Mm -hmm. So we'll use this typically. But next important thing is my compass. You'll notice it is tied down. Typically everything in your kit should be tied down. It's a pretty good one. You can pick them up at surplus stores or anywhere actually online. You don't want to get a cheap one. Mm -hmm. But I've navigated with this thing quite a bit. The next piece I have, this is my IFAC, which is a med kit basically. And I've got a rubber band wrapped around it to keep all the goodies from falling out the side here. I have the Velcro uh, right there. So yeah, we just you just use rubber bands to like make sure everything's secure. Positive control of all of your equipment at all times. Mm -hmm. And then another thing about this taps is it's got a place to put your magazines. This is mine. Nice little uh, storage right here inside the, like I guess I'll call it the, the belt loop, the waistband yeah. or whatever. Let's see, I'm actually surprising myself. Oh, mm. got it's a it. map. Yeah, I got a map in there. We, uh, we had a little field exercise and they handed out these little maps. Oh, okay. And then, Another important thing of land navigation is having protractors. And these are what you use to get your, uh, to oh, shoot. Oh, they make me 
think of geometry. <laughs> and this is what you use to shoot your azimuth and uh, measure the distance in your grid squares. And I like to keep about three uh, on my kit at all times in case I lose one. Mm. Yeah, there they all are. Mm. Usually your unit will issue them, but I like to get the ones that are uh, bought at the store where they're a little bit more precisely like laser cut, mm -hmm. where you can get better measurements. Another thing is I have this whistle. This is for communicating, like, this is like, okay, so there's something called a pace plan, uh, primary alternate contingency emergency. So normally the method of communicating is through radio. Alternate would be like, Yelling this way would be tertiary. So that's just a, <laughs> it's got an extra compass on there, which I I wouldn't trust my life on it, but it's there. Um, I've also got in it a magnifying glass right there. Oh, that's cute. And then on the back of it, it has a Celsius and Fahrenheit thermometer. Cool. This thing I carry on me at all times during the field is a knife. Typically a knife of good quality too. This one, I wrap the handle of paracord. It's pretty sharp. I mean, it's a good useful tool. Not much else to say about a knife, but every person in the army should definitely carry one. See, if I carried a knife in my work bag, I would get in trouble. That's just red flags. You know? <laughs> We're not allowed to carry anything like that. Next up is my IOTV. Now this is my body armor. It's uh, got rated for 9mm Kevlar in there as well as plates that are rated for 762. Is my sustainment pouch. This is usually for things like uh, extra flags or uh, CLP. Um, things to work on your weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, they can go in here. Whatever you need for that mission you can go in here. And if you're like in the prone, I like having it there because it's just, it's close by. When I think sustainment pouch, I think like fruit snacks. I mean, you can put it in there too, but you know, it's typically for stuff that, you know, is uh, useful for working on your mission at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, this is currently set up for an M4. I've got my magazine pouches here on the front and then on the side as well. Uh, sometimes you can put like a grenade pouch. Most of the time I've used a grenade pouch and set it up like up here and it's only held my compass so no, be no biggie. No biggie. On the back I've got my water source. Camelback issued to us through the army. I route the hose through the shoulder and then we'll find some way to route it. Usually I like to use like an S-clip or a like a rubber band and have it have the uh, nozzle held up top so I can just get to it whenever I'm out in the field. So yeah. That is really heavy. Like I've tried to pick it up and move it before and I couldn't. So you think that's heavy. Uh, here's just, it's actually not, it doesn't have everything that I would oh use. Oh my God, that's not everything? No. So here is my ruck. <laughs> and uh, it looks compact as you can see. I'm having to get a little bit back Yeah. because I sat on it and tightened it up. But yeah, he was over there like... <laughs> crank, cranking it. <laughs> cranking it, soldier boy. <laughs> I've got this uh, this front pouch right here is my shovel. Um, you'll use it a couple times. But without further ado, I'm going to start nice. popping this thing open. Okay. So I packed it typically how I would for the field. Um, I did put like the uh, Wubby and Poncho up top so I could just get that out of the way. So we open this up. Yeah. Top part has um, a little extra pouch up there so you can put small things like I would put like a fleece cap or uh, a weapons cleaning kit up there typically. So anyways, here's a tarp. You'll use this to set up like a hooch or if it's raining you'll and you're in the prone you can get under this but uh, typically you'll just sit there in your rain gear and suck it up. And they call this thing the poncho liner. 
I don't understand why because I've never put this under a poncho, uh, especially if I had said poncho on. We just call it the Wubby, and it's a blanket that we use to sleep with. It's very popular in the army. Very popular. It doesn't look very warm. It is. It it's is. Warm. Well, to an extent. It. Um, I think there's better Wubbies out there than this one. I've just had this one for a long time. I think it's been in the army longer than I have. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's hanging in there. It's it's kept me warm a couple of nights. So, okay. you know. I keep you warmer. Yeah, you do. You have CLP. And this stuff is very important uh, for your weapon. So whenever you go uh, go into a field mission, you want to have this on uh, on your bolt before you start your mission, and then after you uh, finish your mission, you're going to want to also use this to clean off your weapon, get the rust, the carbon, uh, just clean that sucker up. So mm -hmm. CLP also good if you just like shooting in your own time. Oh yeah, the next thing that I've got is uh, clear eye pro, ballistic eye pro. I prefer the dark lenses. Uh, because it looks cooler. <laughs> I've got electrical tape. It's useful. The next thing I like to carry inside my ruck, you know, why is it not uh, on the sides already mounted? Because, well, typically a paratrooper has to have a smaller ruck to get out the main door. It cannot be wider than the door. So I keep my sustainment pouches typically inside my ruck until I hit the ground and like an ORP or something is established. Mm -hmm. So whenever we get some downtime, I'll take these out of my ruck. I have two of them, and then I'll get them set up on the sides and redistribute my weight, um, taking things out of the main pouch and put them into the sides so it's easier to get to and easy to work with. Mm -hmm. So there's that. This is my main map right there. It's huge. I got it from some place called The Hobbit nearby. It's pretty cool. Uh, Alright, so the next thing, very important items for a paratrooper is his air items. This is what goes around my ruck and attaches to my parachute harness. Got this, and then this is my hook pile tape lowering line. Uh, whatever I lower my ruck, this is what lowers it and this is what keeps it from falling to the earth so very important pieces to have especially for a paratrooper the next piece that i like to keep up top is this right here this is like a hygiene kit let's open that up i've got the basics in there it's kind of messy but as you can see i've got toothpaste deodorant 100 percent deep batteries, stuff like that. Contingency bag as we call it. I also keep things like 550 cord and uh, 100 mile an hour tape in there. There, I've kind of thrown this stuff in as a bonus because we don't use it all the time, but when we do, it takes up almost all of your ruck space and I hate it. Um, the JBCP gear, which is for uh, biological hazard, chemical warfare. So, if there is chemical no i'm, sorry, I'm laughing because when you said that my mind went to hazard waste like oh. <laughs> a hospital thing so i'm thinking like is it you keep red bags in there no okay no it's like it's for well it's for chemical it's mostly for chemical stuff oh, okay so like tear gas or whatever this stuff can block i don't know what it can officially block oh my god that's scary looking yeah so there it is this is my gas mask and it goes on like so. So, on the EIB standard, you have about uh, nine seconds to get this thing on. You're somebody. scaring the dog. Oh. Warfare. Jay's List. Which, in summertime, it's a sauna. In winter time, it's nice. I'll just put it that way. Chemical specialist. I'm not. I'm not sure what the job designation is called. Y'all can comment below and tell everybody like more so like what this helps out against. But here's the top. It's got the hood. It goes completely. It's, you're supposed to cover yourself completely. There's like tape that's involved. Um, 
There's gloves, like it's like rubber gloves, rubber boot boots that go over your boots. In the hospital, we have what we call isolation gear, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to protect us from like, it's like hazmat. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we put on like this gown and gloves and masks sometimes. So it's kind of like that. You have to make sure you cover up everything, or else one little thing gets through. Kind of like when you guys know that big Ebola outbreak that happened a couple years ago with the nurse who got Ebola from the patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we have it for that kind of reason. Yeah. All right, moving on. This is my sleeping bag. Right here. Uh, looks like I packed the lightweight summer sleeping bag. There are two that you are issued in the army. You get a wintertime sleeping bag and a summertime sleeping bag. So I've got that right there. Mm -hmm. Another important thing to have with that is that baby cover. This goes around your sleeping bag, or you put your sleeping bag in it, however you want to word it. And this is for when you are sleeping in the rain. Hmm. Yeah, so you'll just be a little, it looks like a little human caterpillars on the ground during. Like little burritos? <laughs> yeah, little be burritos laying on the <laughs> forest floor. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I feel like I can fit in that bag. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Let's see. Oh, I got some more miscellaneous things. So I'll, I'll typically keep some extra 550 cord in there. Because we've got a tourniquet here. Looks a little different than the ones we use, but... Yeah. It's got this, uh, this bar so you can really crank down on it. And uh, the training for it hurts. Yeah, tourniquets hurt. Yeah. This, this is a wet weather bag. I've got to turn it inside out because this green is easier to see inside at nighttime mm -hmm. rather than looking into pure darkness. Oh, yeah. So cool. I'll keep things like extra camo, extra shirts, uh, underwear. I'm sure you can understand why you would need all of your clothes inside of a wet weather bag. If you're going to get wet in the field, it's just how it's going to happen. So keep it inside a wet weather bag. Keep all of, all of your extra change of clothes dry. Oh, I, I too carry gum in my uh, in my ruck. Uh, that's also from MREs. Another thing I like about this these rucks, the basic issue ones, is they have at the bottom part right here this zipper where you can open up the bottom and get to. Uh, We'll get to things that are located at the bottom of your rock a lot easier. As you can see, I also got another uh, weapons cleaning kit here in the bottom. So yeah, that concludes uh, that concludes my what's in my work bag, uh, sweetie. This was really cool and exciting for me. I this is my first time seeing everything that goes in his bag, so that Not was my everything. first. Well, this is my first time seeing <laughs> like as much as he put into it, um, right along with you guys. So. We were just learning together. Thank you, babe. But we really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. We thought it would be like really fun to kind of show you guys some of the things that we use for our respective careers. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope that you guys enjoy. Be sure to like this video if you did. And we thank you guys as usual so much for watching and supporting. Bye, guys. Bye.